What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Interview Nux. I'm your host, ADC, and today we're joined by the recording artist, content creator, and songwriter, Franz the Saint. How are you doing today? Man, I'm good. It's great to be here. I'm excited, for real. All right, all right. Let's jump into these questions. This first one is just a kind of an icebreaker, just to get into the, the questions. It's how many holes are in a straw? Huh, okay. I'm, I'm going to go with one on this one just because, you know, it's just one long hole versus, uh, you know, the two separate ends. Okay. All right. So, you, but you can see how people can see that there's two holes, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I definitely get that. Um, but I, I feel like it's probably, probably just one. Yeah. All right. No yeah. right or wrong answers just to break into the interview. So some of these are going to be a deeper question. So. All right, cool, cool, cool. This next question is, what would you attribute your success to? My success? Um, probably just my creative drive. Uh, I have, like, a very curious nature and just, like, a drive for creativity that kind of launches me into things. And um, I guess just my need to be good at creative things. Um, so I guess I would attribute it to that. Um, just uh, also the people, you know, I have around me who all who, you know, continue to drive me to be better at my creative things. Um, but yeah. Yeah. Sweet. So you got your community around you. This drive that you had in you, is it something that you've developed over the years or is it something that has been with you like ever since you were a kid? I feel like in some aspects, it's kind of always been with me. Um, just as a kid, I was always getting in trouble, getting into creative mess. Um, I guess as I grew up, it kind of developed into something that was more focused. And so, you know, as a kid, I was always kind of getting into things. But now it's more like I, a, direct, a direct focus to where it's, you know, specifically it's music and art. And I like to make sure that I'm, I'm coming into those things with all the passion that I have. And so that's kind of what I, what, I, what I got now. It's just grown into something that's kind of bigger than what I what it was in the beginning that's cool I like that answer okay this next one is kind of a deep one how do you deal with fear damn that is a deep one um I guess to deal with fear I kind of sort of assess what about whatever it is scares me the most and from there, I kind of see uh, what I can do to confront it. Um, I'm a very big adrenaline junkie. So typically, I tend to face my fears just for the sake of the adrenaline that comes with it. Um, but yeah, like before going into all that stuff, I always got to know, you know, why do I feel this way? What's scaring me exactly? And how do I combat that? And then, you know, try to charge in if I can. Sweet. What uh, what things do you do to feed your adrenaline junkie side? What do you do? Oh, man. Well, this is crazy. Uh, I feel like for for me, I actually, as an artist, this is crazy to me. But I have stage fright, so I do I do performance a lot. Just just the fact that I can be on stage and kind of work through that fear. Once I get going, it like kind of evaporates. But uh, beforehand, like, I'm always nervous. I'm always freaking out. And then I, you know, get on stage and it's crazy energy. So that's kind of the, the big thing for me. Um, other than that, it's really just getting through uh, whatever comes at, at me, you know. Um, there's not too much day to day that I think I'm afraid of, but definitely I want to say as an artist, my biggest thing would be getting on stage. I have that same fear. So I, we can relate to each other. <laughs> All right. This next question is what moment or moments that you can share had the greatest impact on your life and what lessons can we take away from those? Huh. Okay. This is a big question. I have to sit here and think for a second. Um, Greatest moment. Uh, damn. I want to say the biggest moment was when I finished my first project, uh, Fake Love, Real Dreams. That was back in 2018, I believe. 
Um, that was a big moment for me because, I mean, prior to that, I like had always been interested in music. I was working on music, but it was like my first body of work that had meaning to me that held like significance where I was like able to really talk about the things that felt dear to my heart. And from there, just watching the support I got from uh, friends and family, from other people who listened, uh, people I hadn't even talked to for a long time who said, you know, the the tape helped them work through some stuff on their own just to see the impact that I could have with my music set me up for, you know, even more passion down the line to where it's like, now I know, you know, my, my pen holds something, you know, I can, I can do a little bit of uh, music and hopefully the stuff that I've learned, the stuff that I've gone through that I put to music help someone else uh, work through stuff or, you know, just have a good time in general. So, yeah, I guess that was the answer to the question. Yeah. That's sweet. I like that. Sometimes it, it we don't learn lessons until we actually do something. So it's like putting out your first project like that. Then you got the feedback and it kind of like snowballed into more and more motivation, yeah. I guess. Yeah. I, I like that. I like that answer a lot. So this next question is another deep question. If you could know the complete and honest truth to one question, what would you ask? Probably, will I be successful? That's probably like the biggest question I have. Because I mean, of course, you know, as an artist, Everyone has this goal, like, oh, I'm going to be the next this person, the next Kanye, the next Drake, the next whatever, whatever. Um, but really, like, you don't see it till you get there. And that's one big thing for me is, like, I know I'm doing all these things. I don't have a lot of potential, but, you know, where's that going to go? Where's that going to end up? Is it really going to be me, you know, on this big stage or writing for these great people or is it just going to be something that's kind of like a pipe dream you know so it's like uh I'm still starting out still got a long way to go and it's kind of like I'd like to see where it's all going you feel me if I had the chance you know Hmm. if you if you were to find out that it wouldn't be as high as of success as you imagined and it was like kind of like a lower level type of success would you would how would that change your motivation would you put more effort in or would you kind of like scale it back like how would that answer affect your life if you were to get that question answered uh for me knowing me I'd probably put more effort in um I mean I feel like I'm already going at 100 right now but I mean push push through the limits you know um uh, like I know where I want to be and I know the things that will make me uh, be able to say, you know, I did a great job. And so if I saw that my life wasn't exactly where I wanted it to be, I'd probably say, you know, probably just means I got to work a little harder. And so that's probably the direction I'd end up taking. <clears throat> but at the end of the day, it really would have to be like, what is a lower level? Like, there, there are people who don't have necessarily the recognition of like a Kanye or Drake, but you know, they're still well off as artists. And I don't think I'd be mad at that. Um, so it'd really be like seeing it and being like, okay, is this something I'm okay with or not okay with? And, you know, just coming to terms with that. Sweet. Sorry. We're sorry about these follow-up questions, but we get the no, answers you're, you're giving you're me. Yeah. I, I want to know, like, I want to dig deeper in. So Yeah, bro. I, I welcome it. I welcome it for sure. All right. This next question is kind of more lighthearted. Well, depending on how it goes. But uh, what is your earliest memory? Uh, my earliest memory um, was or is uh, helping my parents clean around the house on the weekends. Um, I used to go to like I don't, I don't know if I went to school with my parents but like they had me really young so um while they were in college I was with them and we used to live on campus housing and because it was like such a tight-knit community we'd always have like all the doors open and everything and we'd like 
blast reggae music it'd be like uh bob marley uh blasting through the radio and uh we just cleaned the house and it was just fun because i mean like as a kid i didn't really do much helping it was just more goofing off while my parents cleaned and it was like that's what i remember just sunny days cleaning the house all the doors open just wind blowing through and it was just it was just cool so you know just uh it was, it, was, it was just a vibe in general. That's what I was going to say. That sounds like a vibe right there. So <laughs> I like that answer. All right. This next question, another lighthearted question. If you had to be an animal, which animal would you pick? Huh. Crazy, crazy question. Uh, probably a dog. Uh, probably, probably a dog. I don't know. I feel like they're, they're loyal creatures. They kind of. They, they chill with the person who they like the most and they always chill with that person. So I think that'd probably be me. I consider myself a pretty loyal and chill person. So I'm, I'm going to go that route. I think the life of a dog wouldn't be that bad. You know, you just go for walks, go to the park. and Yeah, facts, facts, facts. <laughs> man's best friend. So you're always just chilling. And that's a good one. All right. This next question is, who or what are your influences? Okay, so my biggest influences um, musically would have to be uh, Kid Cudi, Smino, Mace, and probably Kanye in terms of uh, his musical diversity, the way he likes to break walls and stuff like that. So I feel like all of those people... I mentioned are people who kind of set standards in their own lane and kind of had a, a point in my life where they were kind of like all like I listened to. They were like my focus point musically. It was like, oh, at the beginning of my life, it was Mace. That was like the first rapper I ever listened to. It was the first uh, album I ever had, which I didn't buy. Definitely stole it from my dad. <laughs> <laughs> um, that, was, that was my first album. Um, Welcome back, Mace. And like from there, that kind of grew my hip hop sense. And um, then it was the next person was Kanye. It was like, yo, he's making some great stuff. Uh, I remember getting into my beautiful dark twisted fam, my beautiful dark twisted fantasy, and just really being in awe at the sounds from that album. Um, and then of course, Kid Cudi. There was the the whole humming phase. That was just vibes, just vibes. Cudi always brings the vibes, and he, you know gave me that new way to see music and just to you know make it more emotional make it something that's you know reaches hits you hits you in a place that you know typically not all music does so it's like uh those are definitely i would say my my influences i like it that midwest well besides mace but you get very midwest yeah yeah, yeah. centric yeah like i like all of those artists so i really dig that that answer all right um this next question is what is a secret that you wish to share that could improve the lives of the people watching? Um, I guess the biggest secret that I learned is that doing what you love isn't that hard. Um, it's really just initiating it that takes the most uh, energy out of you. I guess that's the scariest leap to take. It's just that like, if you want something, just do it and do it to your best ability and people will take notice. Um, I know when I started music, it was like kind of scary to me. Um, but I was like that person who always talked about music. I talked about music endlessly. And it came to a point where it's like, I do a lot of talking, but would I actually survive on a track kind of thing? And so that's when I was like, okay, let me, you know, let me make a track. Um, I made a track. People seem to, you know, like it or enjoy it enough to, you know, get some, get, get a smile, a couple smiles out of it. And I was like, yo, you know, I can actually do this. This is actually something that uh, makes sense for me. And it just grew from there. But it just took that, you know, first step to say, yo, can I do it? Actually doing it and then making, making moves. And then you realize, you know, what's so big in your head is like, oh, you know, I can never be this person. I can't be the person that's on stage yelling and jumping around. I can't be the person to hold a crowd's attention um, to then just giving it a try. It's, it's not as hard as you think. Um, it's 
So everything is a lot bigger in your head than in reality. The, the thing that popped into my mind was the saying, um, the journey of a thousand miles begins with the first step. So it's like in our minds, we can see the journey as being this long thousand mile endeavor, but really it's just yeah. one step at a time, you know? Yeah, 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 exactly. All right. This next question is another deep one. When you're feeling sad, what do you do to make yourself feel happy or at least not feel sad anymore? Uh, uh, man, when I'm feeling sad, typically, um, I like to go for drives. I just like go, like go in the car, uh, play some loud music and just drive. Um, and then see, see where I go. If it's at night, then I just drive around, come back home. But sometimes I end up at a friend's house and we talk it out or whatever. Uh, sometimes I end up grabbing some food or something like, oh, mm-hmm. uh, maybe I just need, you know, want some ice cream or something like that. Or, uh, I end up at a park or something. I go for a walk, like just a place I can kind of think through the feelings, get through everything and come back home just a little lighter, I guess. Yeah. You just reminded me of the last, well, not the last time I was sad, but one time I was sad and, um, I had just, uh, gone through this like troubling time with this girl that I was with and um I just went for a drive and then at the end like I felt better but I was like how did I how did I end up on the other side of town like yeah yeah. just like listening to music and I felt better so yeah you when you said that go for a drive I just immediately went back to that moment in time so that's very true I like that answer (laughs) all right this next question let's get to the lighthearted ones what's your go-to meal my go-to meal, uh, definitely mac and cheese. Like, that's my favorite meal ever. Um, but it has to be homemade mac and cheese. It can't be cracked out of a box. It got to be somebody's auntie or mama, you know, chefing it up. It came straight out the oven. That's that's the meal. Um, don't even got to be nothing else, really. But some yams, fire with that. Um, but really just mac and cheese, bro. Mac and cheese is so good to me. Sweet, the homemade by mom or auntie or somebody yeah, you know yeah, yeah, that's yeah. just great grandma you know somebody who know what they're doing in the kitchen <laughs> i i like it i like it all right this next one is another lighthearted one where is your favorite place my favorite place that's kind of crazy okay let's see anywhere with the homies really uh i'm gonna I'm go with that one because i'm a military kid So I move around a lot. So there's no really stable place that I know, you know. Um, But I know that, you know, when I'm with my friends, when I'm with the people that I love the most, I feel at home. So no matter where I move to, no matter where I go, if I got the homies with me, if I can go back to them or if I can chill with them, I know it's good times. Uh, I know those are the people who rock with me. uh, And, yeah, that's, that's the place I like to be. Very popular answer. I've heard that from multiple guests doesn't matter where it is just in the company of good friends and yeah that's a very popular answer all right this next question i'm gonna do another deep one here but what is a change what what is a change you wish to see in the world a change i wish to see in the world um i'd wish that uh people had more empathy like more compassion. I feel like a lot of problems in the world right now come from people not taking the time to hear other people out. Um, I feel like if more people sat down with the person that they think they have the most problems with and just hear them out from their point of view and took time to really understand, like not just listen, just like actually understand and hear them out, that uh, a lot of things would change. Um, And that would bring about a lot of change in the world in general you know that that one quick step is like okay cool now I know where you're coming from um I can speak to you about where I'm coming from and maybe we can come to an agreement and just you know little by little change uh what's going on so I used to I have a follow-up for this question and it used to be do you see this happening but a lot of people, I would get pessimistic answers and they didn't have a good outlook on the future. So I changed the question to what can you and I do to make this happen? And you kind of sort of touched on it a little bit, but 
maybe there's something that we can do in our daily lives that. Yeah. Um, I want to say the best thing we can do to make that happen is just uh, starting with ourselves as far as taking the listening upon ourselves when things go down. It's like, you know, a situation just happened. Take the time to listen before you get heated, you know, or think through it at least and be like, yo, why did this happen? How did this go down? Why did it go down the way it went down? Um, and just coming to whoever the, the I guess, uh, what the opposite party is and just, you know, making sure that you hear them out before exploding. Uh, I feel like that would solve a lot of conflicts. And I mean, at least for me, even if maybe I don't like what they're saying, I can still come to the, the term where it's like, it's not that big enough to fight about once i've thought through it you know it's like it's not it's just not that big a deal and then at the very least you get two people who may not agree but you know they're 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 cool enough to be like okay i don't like i don't really need to go through any more uh pain or heartbreak to settle this it's just you know it is what it is and you keep it pushing you know i like that approach i think we all should Should take that approach, so. All right, let's do another lighthearted one. What is a superpower you wish you had? Superpower I wish I had? I want to say... I want to say probably uh, telekinesis or something. Something along those lines. I feel like being able to move things with your mind is a pretty cool power. But that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like also on top of that, that may be one of the most uh, practical powers, you know, besides maybe running really fast. Uh, is like, you can actually do things with that, you know, versus some of the other powers like, okay, you know, there's not much, there's not much practical use. Like swimming underwater, I'm not sure. <laughs> like breathing underwater, you know, this is, it's a power, but I can't do nothing with that in the world right now. Maybe if you really like fish or something, I don't know. You like this marine biologist might have a might have a plan for that one. <laughs> I don't have any use for that one, so I see where you're coming from. All right, this next question is: How do you deal with anger? Huh, anger. I want to say I deal with it just about the same way as sadness. Like I try to separate myself from whatever is making me angry, and typically go for a drive or just be a, like distract myself like be away from the thing that's making me angry uh if i can get some space from that then typically i can cool off and it's like all right i don't like i don't like being angry so just due to that it's usually easy for me to calm down just because I don't like being angry. So after a while, if I've separated from whatever it is making me angry, I think through it, I find a reason not to be angry and then I can just relax. Um, And so that's usually how that goes. Uh, But there are other times where it's kind of a little bit harder and it's, you know, might have to just go to the gym or something, Uh, just work, work through it push through it uh maybe i need a quick yell or something just just yell into the void kind of thing or turn up the music in the car and just yell in the car and then release that negative energy um but yeah that's usually how i go about it i think there's a few ways i go about it yeah sweet i like you have different avenues you can choose depending on the situation so yeah 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 all right, this is going to be the last of the interview questions, but after this, we'll have some like a little bit of promo for you in the show. Okay. But uh, this last one is, what made you get into what you do? Um, so music has always been a big thing for me. Uh, even before I started making music myself. Um, and just due to that, like I've always had like a hunger for it, for, you know, just making, making a tune, making whatever, uh, I used to make songs in the car and whatnot. 
Um, when I was a kid, I used to, you know, beat around on the table. I used to get in trouble for that all the time, like making beats on a table. It was a, like a lot, like it was a lunchroom type deal. And my mom would be mad because I used to do it at any table. It'd be like we'd pull up to my grandma's house, so I'd be beating on her table. We'd pull up to a restaurant, I'd be beating on her table. She would, she she'd be sick. And so, like, that's just something that's kind of always like came with me it's just just my energy and vigor for like sounds and music and whatnot um and as a kid like I was always delving into new music so there's you know a time where I was really into uh Stevie Wonder and like Coltrane and like all these different artists and like once I felt like I had enough of one artist I'd travel to the next one I'd see what they were doing and I just you know uh, music was just always a big thing for me and so because of that uh it just grew into something that I had to try and so eventually um I just started doing it and luckily I had friends who were also uh in the music game um my boy 20k and uh Glev they were friends I met in college um they're equally just as talented and great at music as I am and they kind of fueled my passion even more just to be able to see people who were also uh as excited as I was and who had that itch to you know make something it just it was just cool to be in that space and so from there it just got bigger and bigger and bigger till now you know I'm in my first album stage um and I'm making something that I never thought I could before like if I could show myself what I'm doing now like the, my past self I would be so amazed. I like that answer. You took me back to middle school, man. Two pencils and a desk, man. Just yes, sir. making yes, beats. Sir. Yeah. Bro, you go crazy in the lunchroom, bro. Yeah. <laughs> and I remember getting in trouble all the time. Like, why are you banging on the table? And just like, just doing stupid shit when I was a kid. So yeah, yeah, you, yeah, took yeah. Me, you took me back a little bit. All right. These uh these last two questions are just like I said, promotion for you, a little bit of promotion for the show. Yeah, so yeah. uh what is it that you have coming up? Is there anything that you want to plug or promote? Um, uh, well, yeah, my album's coming up uh November 5th is my album. Got a couple singles dropping. Um about seven days. My first single Cortez drops off my album up tempo. Um, so I'm excited to get everybody's reaction to that because uh, you know, see how people feel about it album's been about a year and a half in the making so since covid the first um the first lockdown happened i started the album and uh it's a really fun tape it's a really fun exciting album just kind of to boost everyone's morale you know kind of shake things up um and i just hope everyone likes it a lot so that's coming the album coming november 5th uh single coming october 1st so hopefully everybody vibes with it and uh yeah, that's, that's what I got. Sweet, sweet. And then this uh, last question is a little bit of promotion for the show. Uh, who would you like to see on the show? Is there anybody, you want, any of your friends, any musical artists that you would like to see? Um, yeah, so like I just said, um, 20K, uh, Glev, those are two people who are crazy artists who um, I know you probably love to chat with, uh, that they probably, uh, make good, good additions to your show. Um, they're both kind of R&B artists, so they're kind of different from what I do, um, on, on the rap side of things, but they're both amazing artists. Sweet, sweet. Um, dang, what was I going to say? Okay, so your, your album's coming out, it's going to be called Up Tempo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, up tempo, and that's November fifth. It's coming out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The single coming out October first. Yeah, I so, got one October first and October fifteenth. I believe. Yeah. Oh, and then uh, this is what I was gonna ask you. Do you have a like? Do you plan on shooting a music video? Because I have another show called Ear Nuts where I re I review music videos. So if you have a music video that you're planning on doing, go ahead and send that over to me and yeah, yeah. Sh shoot me the link, and then we'll have you on that show too. So hey, cool. That sounds dope. <laughs> um hopefully i can get one shot very soon i've got uh some ideas cranking for this first single <laughs> sorry um hopefully i can turn it into a video we'll see how everything plays out if i can make it back to new york that's where um my videographer is shout out to austin 
Um, but yeah, so if I can do that, then you know it'll it'll happen. Sweet, sweet. All right, everybody. This is the end of the episode. I just want to say thank you to France the Saint. Hey, um, everybody out there, go check out his stuff. Go follow him. Be on the lookout for the album and the singles coming out. And uh, yeah, we just want to say thank you to everybody out there. Peace. Yeah, yeah, yeah.